As this mixture of bog ore, charcoal, and flux was heated, the flux would float the impurities to the top where they would be raked off. If you visit some of the lost towns like Atzian and take a walk in the woods, you can still see some of this slag today. Bits of charcoal will be staring out at you from the black mass. When the Iron Master decided the time was right, the bottom of the furnace would be opened, and the molten iron would flow out into channels dug in the sand. These channels branched off into short, straight channels where the molten iron would form what was called a pig. They called it a pig because they resembled baby pigs suckling their mother. Some of the molten iron was pulled off and poured into molds to make things like firebacks, one of the most famous being George Washington's crest or cipher. Washington ordered four of these ciphers for his home in Mount Vernon through agents in Philadelphia and they were cast at Batstow. Two still exist. After it cooled and solidified, the pig iron was taken to forges where it was reheated and poured into molds to make items like pots, cannon shot, or water pipe. Much of the water pipe used in Philadelphia came from the forges of the New Jersey Pine Barrens, and some of it is still in use today. Iron making in the New Jersey Pine Barrens died out in the late 1800s when coal and a better grade of iron ore was found in Pennsylvania. One of these places was Slocum's Hollow, which is now part of present-day Scranton. Ebenezer Slocum built furnaces along the Lackawanna River. He went out of business, and the story goes that the iron he made was so pure that when he made nails from it, they would shatter when hit with a hammer. George and Selden Scranton bought the furnaces and began forging T-bars, which led to the expansion of the railroad. So it should come as no surprise that the Steamtown National Historic Site, relating the history of steam locomotives, is right across the street. More next time from LostTownsVideo.com. Thank you.